Welcome back to the Financial Times in New York, where I'm joined by Richard Hunt, who is president and chief executive of the Consumer Bankers Association, a 96-year-old trade group representing about 2 million employees at banks all across the country. Now, he's been in his situation since 2009, uh, which has been a pretty grim period for the big retail banks. They've had to contend with a slew of post-crisis regulations. They've got rock-bottom interest rates. And they've also been suffering a, a competitive assault from all kinds of fintech players. Now, Richard, welcome. Thank you. Let's begin with the interest rate environment, which, uh, since you've been around, has been uh, virtually zero. Correct. But uh, it appears that the Fed is just about ready now to, to raise rates for the first time since 2006. How is that going to affect your uh, core constituents? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm hoping this signals the beginning of a rising interest rate environment. I also believe that means the economy is getting better in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. We have 6,300 banks in this country. It'll be very interesting to see how they adjust to the new raising interest rate environment. Right. So that's the theme for 2016. Another theme for 2016 is the presidential election. And so far on the campaign trail, it's, it's early days still. Yeah. But it, it seems that Hillary Clinton's getting some good mileage out of anti-bank rhetoric. Uh, Donald Trump also giving a few hits to the banks along the way. Um, is there a sense that um, the regulatory relief that you've been crying out for won't happen, at least in the first term of the next uh, president? Well, I think it's important for all politicians and all Americans to understand the banking system is night and day different than 2009. Thanks in some part to Dodd-Frank, but also banks have gotten their house in order. They're making sure they're not as risky as they may have once been, better capitalized, providing reasonable loans, reasonable rates to their customers. So I think the politicians need to take a step back and understand this is a totally different banking environment than 2008. Is there a sense that some of the, the stuff that came in with Dodd-Frank, uh, a lot of it, of course, is still to come, but some of the early stuff has been damaging the banks? Well, I think Dodd-Frank was 70% good, but the 30% they got wrong, they really missed out, way off the mark. I think the creation of a new government agency called the CFPB was an overreach, was overprotection. We're all for regulation if it's properly administered. But the CFP, CFPB, as I understand it, is, is de designed to ensure that there's no more unfair, deceptive, or abusive acts and practices uh, amongst banks. Isn't that a good thing? Oh, it's a great thing. And we're all supportive of the CFPB. I know that sometimes the Democrats try to say we're trying to get rid of the CFPB. There's nothing further th from the truth. However, we need to make sure we have this agency that has checks and balances. I think everybody would agree in Washington, D.C., having checks and balances on everybody of, of the United States government is a good thing. So at the moment, the CFPB doesn't have the correct checks and balances? I don't think so. They're led by one single person, a director, not a commission. They have no budgetary shortfalls of any type anytime soon. Uh, all we're trying to do is perfect the CFPB, not eliminate the CFPB. Okay. Let's move on to fintech uh, quickly, mm -hmm. the, the ways in which uh, banks are threatened by these guys uh, across multiple fronts. They've all, they've all been responding, looking to do deals with some JP Morgan, uh, for example, last week, tying up with OnDeck Capital, an on online sure. lender. Um, ha have your guys, your, your, your members, got used to the, uh, the, the new competitive sets, or is it still very much uh, a process of friction? I think about four years ago, we thought new wave companies were threats. Now I think they're more like partners. However, we have to make sure there's a level playing field. We are not afraid of competition. We've had competition since the beginning of the banking system over 200 years ago. We just want to make sure it's a level playing field for everyone. Many of our banks have either partnered or bought the Silicon Valley companies. But we have to make sure that these companies out of Silicon Valley can withstand a credit downfall if one were to occur. Does that mean, what, tighter supervision? Sure, they should have regulation. If they want to make a loan or take deposits, they should be regulated by the Fed, the OCC, and perhaps the CFPB as well. Mm -hmm. We have no apprehension that they are competitors. However, we will compete anywhere, anytime, anyplace, as long as it is a level playing field. Let's talk quickly about cybersecurity. JP Morgan, the biggest uh, retail bank by assets in the US, uh, recently disclosed it was subject to a, a huge attack uh, last year. Um, how serious is this a threat to, to your members? Well, most attacks have occurred in the merchant industry, not the financial services industry. Here's what we now know in this new world order, if you will. There are people who get up every single day trying to hack, hack into the infrastructure of either a merchant or financial institution, and in many instances, the United States government. We are all working together with the United States government to protect consumers' data. If a consumer's data is harmed or hacked, we want to do everything we can to contact the customer and let them know we're working on this, this problem. 
Thank you very much, Richard. Sure, thank you.